You know the vibes! Another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast brought to you by NBA 2K22. I am Mo Mootsi alongside not just your grandma's favorite player, maybe <laughs> your mom's favorite player, your sister's favorite player, your auntie's favorite No name! Player, hey, real name, no gimmicks. <laughs> real name, no gimmicks. The point guard guru, Mr. BJ Armstrong's in the building. We're breaking down what, in my opinion, was a disappointing night of NBA action. Why oh. was it? Why was it disappointing? Because BJ, it's six AM. The sun is shining through my windows. I'm not going to be able to sleep for hours. And when two games are blowouts, I'm just like, come on, man! At least one of them could have been close. We saw the Miami Heat take down the Philadelphia 76ers with ease, a 35 point victory for Miami. And then we just saw a 30 point win for the Phoenix Suns against the Dallas Mavericks. And this staying up late stuff, I love it. I love this game. I love basketball, but it's a lot more fun when the games are close. And tonight, we had two one sided games. And we all know 82% of teams that win game five go on to win the series when it's tied 2 2. So it was disappointing. I wanted to see it to be close. Let's start with Philly. And. The first thing, everyone's going crazy at Charles Barkley for what he said in the halftime show, is he said Joel Embiid's playing badly because he's upset about not winning MVP. Guess what? Joel Embiid has known he's not going to be MVP for a while now. I think everyone knew. It wasn't a shock when it came out yesterday. He wasn't upset about that. He has a broken bone in his face. And what's really mad to me is that the injury Joel Embiid has if he is to re-injure that bone around the eye socket that is fractured, it could lead to permanent damage to his vision. This man is legitimately risking his long-term health to try and win this playoff series. We must respect it. And instead of Embiid, he had an underwhelming game tonight, but you could see he was clearly being affected by the injury. And he had the ball hit, like, like someone hit into the ball, which hit into his face. It clearly affected him. He finished with 17 points. By, by somehow, he's the highest scorer on the Sixers with 17 points. But the injury is clearly affecting him, as well as only having four working fingers on one hand. So I just got to say how amazing it was what he did in the last two games, rather than piling on him for this one. James Harden, on the other hand, 14 points. Tyrese Maxey, nine points. Tobias Harris, 12 points. BJ, talk to me. This was a bad loss for Philly. Because I really thought they could come in here and steal this game. Well, Mo, you know, you and I had a, a taping earlier. And I'm just going to stick to what I said there. I think if this goes seven, I like Philly. I said it. I said it earlier. And I'm going to say it again. I think this is a series that Philadelphia, if they give themselves a chance four times to just win one of those games, <laughs> I think with this Miami Heat team, I think they can win game seven. And here's why I say that. I think they can win game seven is because when you get to a game seven mode, you have to have your best player be the best player. Yeah. And I think Joel Embiid is the best player on the floor. And if I can just give Joel Embiid, this is his first road playoff game in this series. Okay. And I want to say this about Trump. Every, these guys are human. I know we think they're not human. They're superstars and da, 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 heroes. And they have feelings. It's okay. If Joel has a moment, he deserves to have a moment and trust me. These guys have feelings. He has the right to feel however he feels. If indeed that's a, if, if, if that is a real thing, who knows? But he has a right to feel that way, right? But it's like, you know, people break up and do things. Some people take it one way. Some people take it another. He has a right to feel however he feels because he's clearly poured his heart and soul into this season, into his career, so forth and so on. However, I think the big fella, if he can just give himself one more chance, I think he can, I think they can get one game. Now, 
James Harden. Mm. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm at a point because I want James Harden to be like James Harden. Like I saw him last game, and I was like, okay, maybe this was a confidence booster. You know what I mean, Bo? Yeah, you, know you, you, you start you found to get your a little rhythm. confidence. You got your rhythm yeah. back under you. Your shots. You see the ball go through the hoop. You're like, okay, I'm, I, I'm okay. the guy. I'm James Harden. James Harden. Who's talking? I to can. Me? Nope. And and Mo, it's just it's just it's you know it's just not there. I I mean I I I don't I I can't make any excuses. It's just not there. So if they're going to win, they're going to need a phenomenal effort by the big fellow, and then I think Maxi and Tobias Harris and these guys will follow. And then whatever we get from James, it's just added both. If James plays well. They probably will win. If James doesn't pl- play well, they probably will have a chance to win. And as long, we just don't need them to play awful. So uh, give Miami credit. Give Miami credit, though. They shot well, played well. They did everything great. Da da da. They took care of home court. Uh, but I would be interested to see a game seven because you know what? Anything could happen. And I, I think Joel Envy is prime. He's a he's I think he will be the difference maker in a game seven, even though I traditionally go with the team who's going to win, you know, game five. I think in this case, game seven is a big moment. And I think Jamal Embiid is, is, is yeah, he, as, he could win that game. As seven. long as the injuries aren't affecting him, like you could see here tonight, he clearly couldn't get it going early and he needs to find yeah, that rhythm to get everyone else there looks was as it well. His back or something? What was going on? Yeah, well, was he tried to save like a ball from going out of bounds and he like leaped right. into the stands and I, it, the, the camera panned off. So I didn't right. see what happened because I wasn't in the arena. Uh, but something he must have tweaked something because the next time the camera showed him, he's limping. So, you mm-hmm, know, but mm-hmm. I think early on, it was really the turnovers that killed Philly and let Miami get out to right. the lead. They were just giving right. up turnover. I think there was like three possessions. I'm screaming at the TV, Doc, please call a timeout. Uh, and then he eventually did. And but by then, Miami were already up now. And then they kind of just they just ran away with it. Credit to them, they did a good job. You know, fighting through screens rather than just switching straight away, helping Bam Adebayo, um, you know, with that on their defensive coverages. They did. They played a good game. They handled business at home. James mm-hmm. Harden, though, I don't know what to say about this guy. I just don't know who's going to turn up to the arena. I can't predict right. the Philly game again. I don't know who's turning up for game six. I, I don't know who's going to be there. Like, like I, it doesn't. Well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm, I'm just, you know what? This is who he is at this stage. Monday this is night who he in is. Miami must have been one. Yeah, it, 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 this is who he is, you know, and I, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just, okay, I'm, 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 I'm moving on to the next one. I'm not going to dwell on it. I just know we got to get the big fella back and, you know, we got to get him more. He's got to get a minimum of 25 shots. Yes. I'm not even worried about FGMs. I'm just worried about FGAs. If he can get 25 shots. Yep. And then I, I think I think I think T- Philly tonight he took 12. He took less shots than Tobias Harris in tonight's game. Yeah. It was it right. was not great. He took less shots than Max Struess, uh for the Miami Heat, who had a great job. He scored 19 points and grabbed 10 boards. He actually was a, was a really good player. And we saw Duncan Robinson finally check into the series. He came in off the bench and you know he scored one <laughs> three point. It's, it's good to see him back. Jimmy Neutron as the latest. Did you see uh, did you see uh did you see the coaches uh did you see the coach's uh, uh, quote after after game five? No, no, no. So, uh, so Coach Spo says, they go, yeah, Coach, you know, you guys haven't been shooting well from, from three. What do you think about it? He was like, yeah, we, we haven't been shooting well. Maybe we could use Duncan Robinson and just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got to stay ready, though. You got to stay ready. You got to be a true professional. Yeah. Stay ready, Duncan Robinson. But you know, not too much to discuss in that one. Um, it wasn't the most entertaining one to watch as Miami just ran up the scoreline. Jimmy Butler was playing right. great. There was no Kyle Lowry again, um, and, and Victor Oladipo looked solid off the bench. But what can we say? The main talking point of the evening wasn't even to do with basketball. The main talking point, speaking of the big fella, was the big fella for the Suns, Bismack Biombo, who was chased by Marquis Chris. 
Oh, stop. Down the tunnel. <laughs> that's what the, that's what the timeline saying. I, I seen that. No, that was what weird. did it say? They're saying they, they're saying Marquis Chris ran down the tunnel. I went and looked at the video. I was like, he ain't run nowhere. Foolish. Anyway, they go, they got into a little bit, you know, a little bit of talking at the end of the game. And is that what they're saying? Uh, you, you do... This is what they're saying. Yeah. This is, the internet loves to over sensationalize things. No, I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. No, yeah. leave, leave that alone. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, but no, anyway, I, I what I wanted to say was, it's a shame that this happened because, you know, and Bismarck didn't really do anything. This guy followed him into the tunnel and then left the tunnel quite quickly. I think when he realized who the hell he was talking to. But what I wanted to talk about was Bismarck's impact on the game. Remember when we were doing the last game, we were doing Sky TV and we were talking during the game and I was screaming, why are they not putting Biz in the game? They waited until the third quarter, the fourth quarter for him in. Today, Monty changed up his rotation. He put Bismarck in early on. And that was a big adjustment. And that's what really helped, uh, you know, F- uh, Phoenix get away with this one. He played 21 minutes and was a plus 20 he did a great job on the defensive end, his ability to switch and stay in front of quicker guys, move his feet, and then offensively, you know, just be a good solid screener, score a few looks on the inside. It was a fantastic game for Mr. Biombo. Uh, BJ, what stood out to you in this matchup? Well, the coaching and the adjustments were fantastic. And Mo, that's what the playoffs are all about. It's all about matchups, you know, you could see the difference. You know, Mo, I, I, I want to go back real quick. I'm going to just say this quickly. You know, you during COVID and, and, and the pandemic, you could see the difference of play in the, in the bubble to now. You could see how guys play – you know, especially the role players, how they play on the road and how they play at the home. You could see the impact of your home crowd. And that's what was fantastic. You could see the difference in the coaching. The crowd was roaring tonight in Phoenix. Yes. yes. And you can see that. OK, now Dallas was fantastic at home. They were fantastic. They really were. They played terrific. And then you could see how the role players play different on the visiting team on the road. That's why you need, you know, you you need players to step up, so forth and so on. And that's what, that's what has stood out to me. That's what's standing out to be. And, but today, Hey, there was a reason Monty Williams was coach of the year. You know, when you see these, these, some of these coaches are really, really, really good. Yep. Tonight was a clinic. Yep. Okay. Tonight was just a clinic. The defense. Jason Kidd had the, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say, sorry, 80 points in the entire game for the Dallas Mavericks. The defense yeah. and the way that they came out tonight was impeccable. Now, Jason Kidd and his staff has put together a marvelous game plan, right? You lose the first two, they come back, they win two. And then you could see, instead of like panicking, pushing, they said, okay, this is what's going on. And these guys came out and made an adjustment and then they win by 30. At home, this this is like incredible stuff here. Like this is really a game mode that I'm going to have to watch a couple of times. Like this is going to get me through my workout tomorrow. I want to mm-hmm. watch this game a couple of times because when you see coaches make adjustments like this, then I'm so excited for game six because you know Jason Kidd is already on his iPad getting ready for yep. the next game. Yep. You know Luca is giving feedback and he's ready. You know the crowd is going to be fired up in, in Big D. And, you know, and, and I'm really, I'm, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see how they're going to come. Now, Bismack Biombo to me was a difference maker. Mm-hmm. He was a difference maker today. Why? It's because Luca wasn't able to just exploit the matchup that he wanted. Bismack really gave them presence. He allowed them to play smaller and quicker. They played with better pace, I thought, on the offensive end. Um, and they just did a much better job, you know, DeAndre Aiden played big boy basketball when he caught the ball down there. He was very aggressive. And what can we say about Devin Booker? I mean, he was, he was, he was fantastic. I mean, he was, he was really good. You know, looks like a first team, all NBA player to me, (laughs) you know, Um, he was, he was really good. So great job. They're up three, two. And now they got to win one game. 
and it's going to be tough. Now, I, I, I want to see this Phoenix team at least play well on the road in this series. I think it's important for them. Um, but you know what? I, I thought it was I thought it was a it, it was a well play game for Phoenix. Dallas has nothing to hang their heads down about. Things like this happen. This was a tough environment, you know, and and and, and that's why you play. That's why the games in the regular season matter, Mo. Yes. It's because when you get to the playoffs, you need every advantage you can get. And you can see, Mo, without question, you know, everybody needs a little home cooking. Okay. That's why we were really singing the praises of the Boston Celtics yesterday. That was an incredible, incredible game. And it took an incredible, really, uh, uh, an effort of a lifetime. I mean, that was the greatest effort probably of Al Horford's playoff career. <laughs> right? That was <laughs> to get that win. Okay? So th- 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 this was great. And, and I'm telling you, this is a prelude to what's going to happen tomorrow. Mo, Man. that's going to be a good game tomorrow. Man, Boston, we'll, talk, we'll talk about Boston, that in a sec. We'll, t- we'll, we'll talk, talk about that in one sec. I just want to say one more thing about Phoenix now. DeAndre Ayton had 20 points, nine rebounds. Yeah. You know, in, in 22 minutes, it seems like he had a dominant game. This guy could come out and very easily score 30 points a night in this series. The Dallas Mavericks lack interior presence. They love to go small ball, spread the floor, five out. DeAndre Ayton just needs to get the ball down low and just dunk on guys. He, if I, if I was with DeAndre in right now, I'll just show him tape of Shaquille O'Neal over and over again because it seems to me that he wants to go get the ball and he kind of overthinks what he's about to do. And sometimes it works, but sometimes I just feel like if you would have been a bit more aggressive, you would get the bucket and the foul rather than just getting the foul. Or, you know, you could have scored there rather than passing up to a teammate. So I want to see a bit more aggression from him because I think if he does turn that up, then Dallas don't really have a chance at all in the remainder of this series. But PJ, we got to talk about tomorrow's games. I'm nervous. <laughs> Tied at two two. The Celtics. Well, Mo, 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 you, I can't. You can't be nervous. The reason you, why I'm nervous. Fan, the fans should be nervous. I am nervous. You and I are in for a treat, Mo. As 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 basketball. You know, we're lifers. No, no, this, no. You've got to let me land. Okay, the go The reason ahead. Go why ahead. I'm nervous. Because if the Celtics can win this series, I am legitimately concerned about where my imagination is going to take me. If Al Horford comes out and plays like he did, or Grant Williams comes out and played like he did earlier in the series, and the Celtics can go up 3-2 and have the chance to close out the series, I'm worried about what my imagination is going to start dreaming about this team. I'm worried about me thinking about, okay, what's the next step if you've just taken up the defending champions? But first and foremost, we gotta we got to get to this game. I was saying to my friends earlier today, I'm predicting a 50-piece for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Reason being, number one, he's fired up, okay? Al Horford got the last laugh. That ain't going to sit right with Giannis. You know Giannis. You know how hard he goes, how determined he is. He's going to come out aggressive. The other part of it, is this is the first time it's been a quick turnaround in this series now. Just one day rest, and they've traveled to Milwaukee. The Milwaukee Bucks have got, uh, traveled from Milwaukee to Boston. Uh, but Boston Celtics, Al Horford's a little bit older. I mean, he looked visibly tired throughout that game just before his fourth quarter explosion. But I think Giannis is going to have a huge game. So the key for me is limiting the rest of them. As we spoke about yesterday, attacking Drew Holiday and making him tire out and forcing him to self-create on the offensive end and staying home on those shooters. That's going to be the key for me. But I think it's going to be a fantastic game of basketball. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, great players are going to do what great players do. And Jason Tatum, you know, he he's now, he's there. I mean, he's taking the step. He's there. He is, he's going to find a way to make great plays and, and play and have an effect on the game one way or another. So watching him last game was great, but you know what? I, I, I just have two words for you, Al Horford. That's all I can say. All right. This, Do you think this is be Al, this is Al Horford appreciation. Thanks. This is nothing else to talk about. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not going to, it was so good. I'm not going to come to expect that in game five, game six, or game seven. He was that good. Big fella, at 35, you just give me what you got. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, and to our future NBA players and WNBA players, is this. That was a professional effort. Al Horford is a pro. A pro is pro. Al Horford is a pro, okay? Now, I don't know what was said between him and Giannis, but you know what I do appreciate? Al said, you know what? You got to knock me out. Mm -hmm. There's no intimidation here. Mm -hmm. I'm a pro. And I've been around the block for a minute. let Let me tell you something about Al Horford. Al Horford has won at every step of the way, you know, going back to, you know, college, he was back to back NCAA champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with Noah okay. on the Florida team. Al, Al Horford, Al Horford has been a pro for a long time. I think Al came in the league in 2007, I believe. Yeah. If I, my memory serves me correctly, Al Horford is a pro. You're not going to intimidate Al. Al is not going to get intimidated because you're an all star and you're the best player. And, and Al's a pro. Now, I love what he did. I love how he was prepared, but more importantly, Big Fella got leadership. Big Fella showed up. Big Fella carried that game. Mm-hmm. Because if he didn't make those shots and make those plays, okay, because he wasn't only doing this on the offensive end. Big Fella was, they gave him a tall task. He was guarding Giannis. Now, incredible three-point shooting. I love the dunk. Nothing you can say about the dunk. I didn't even know Al still had a little pop in those legs like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, and, 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 and now we're in a fight. Now yes. we're, we're in a fight. Now we're in a 2-2 two, two fight. As it should be. This is how this series should be. Didn't matter if they won the first two. They won. It's 2-2. Two, two. They've both established that, you know what? They can knock each other out. They've won on each other's court. This series has begun. And now it's going to come down to where it should be. The players that's going to play in between the lines. It's a very physical game. I, I, I love the, I, I love the coaching strategy. I mean, these have been some beautifully played games. Mm-hmm. We've seen great plays. We, you know, Jalen Brown's had a great game. Marcus Smart's had a great game. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Giannis has had a, a great game. Drew Holiday's had a great game. The coaches have had great games. Now we're going to see the depth of these things because now the bench or one, somebody's bench is going to have to win a game. Now, Bobby Porters did not play a lot of minutes in the last game for whatever the reason. The depth of the Celtics, I haven't seen it yet in this series. We need but the we're going to need Pritchard's game. <laughs> we need we need whichever team gives you one of those you know those bertons remember that berton yep. effort where yep. you just had game four whichever Dallas. team can provide that because and the reason i'm saying that is because now they're going to go every other day yep okay and i know these guys are great conditioned athletes and all of these things and i know they're going to play hard but let me tell you something that's a difficult thing to do you got to Fly to Boston, play, fly back to Milwaukee, play, and then you might have to fly back to Boston again. Somebody that was unexpected here is going to show up. And whichever that somebody is, along with the player we expect to show up, is going to win this series. And right now, it could go either way. Well, do you know one thing? I'm glad it's not showing up anymore. The Memphis Grizzlies, and especially their coach, Taylor Jenkins was getting real annoying with the things that he was trying to insinuate about Jordan Poole and trying to say that Jordan Poole by putting his hand on John Morant's knee when he was trying to go for a loose ball caused him to have an injury. I thought it was really quite embarrassing. We spoke about this earlier on the Heat Check show, but here's the deal. The Memphis Grizzlies didn't reveal the results of John Morant's MRI for an extra day because they wanted to continue their propaganda that Jordan Poole had injured John Morant. It came out that John Morant's got a bone bruise and that clearly was not caused by Jordan Poole. So I think I would like to see Coach Taylor Jenkins apologize to Jordan Poole 
for putting out there that he is the cause of these injuries. Um, and he 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 came out in his press conference and said, so "Is this a bone bruise that happened it. somewhere in the game? It, ha- it happened in the game. That happened before. I think it happened in like because he missed quarter. a lot of games. Yeah, I think oh, okay. it happened in like the third, third quarter. quarter. So like he knocked knees with someone. You know what I mean? Okay. But it, it okay. wasn't Jordan Poole. You know he, the clip that's going viral on social media, and he's got his hand and the hand touches the leg. I just want to say that okay. I'm tired of the the complaining and Golden State up three. Hey Mo, and can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Ask you one question, real quick. Where are you right now? What do you mean? Are you in London? Because I thought I saw you at the Miami game. <laughs> <laughs> we the best. <laughs> I thought I saw you rubbing elbows with Coach Spo on the sideline. Well, I, mean, I thought that. Man. Where where are you right now, bro? Where are you? Man, I'm at, I'm at home right now, but you know, you might oh, see okay, my okay. you might see my twin, okay. my my OG over there, DJ Carly catching rebounds, throwing assists on the sidelines. That's gonna be me one day. And um hopefully my sneaker collection will be as elite as his one day. But DJ, I can't wait for tomorrow's games. I do want to end this episode on a little bit of a sad note. Um, we had oh. some some sad news. Uh, Big Bob Lanier has passed away, oh, NBA Hall of Famer. Yeah. And I just wanted, you know, to ask you for the the younger audience who listen to this show, um, who see this news today, just to put into context some of the greatness. One of the true giants of this sport, Hall of Fame big man, played in the seventies and the eighties. But if you had any memories you want to share with the audience over here, uh, to to give them some context if they're unfamiliar with Big Bob. Yeah, um, well, I, I just heard that news as well, Mo, and it's, it's a very sad day. I, you know, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and Bob Lanier was drafted by the Detroit Pistons. So I grew up, you know, that was one of my childhood heroes, you know, the Dauber, you know, that's what, that's what we call them, you know, you know, Big Bob, the Dauber, you know, mm-hmm. um, growing up in Detroit. I can still see the left hand hook shot. Great big man. You know, he played the game in an era where the bigs had a little nastiness to him. You know, that was mm-hmm, you know, nothing like they, easy. Yeah, it was. He would tell you, you know, hey, I make my living in here, little fella. Stay out of the lane. And <laughs> uh, a gentle soul. And, and I got a chance to know, you know, you know, we just call him, you know, Big Bob. I got a chance to know Bob. During my career, he worked in the NBA. He was always around. He was a he was a gentle soul, just a kind man. Always had a kind word to say. And even after I got done playing, and we stayed in contact and through NBA events, NBA cares. He was always at NBA All Star Weekend, so forth and so on. And um, just very, I think you know Bob was. See, I'm fifty. He, Bob had to be like seventy something, seventy three, seventy four, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, it's just very unfortunate. So my condolences to his family and, uh, we're going to miss the, we're going to miss Bob. You know, he was, like I said, he always had a kind word, um, real gentle, gentle soul. And, um, you know, he's part of the NBA family and, uh, just want to say respect to him and he will be dearly, dearly missed, um, not only in the NBA community, but all around the world because he, I mean, he was, you know, he made an impact. And um, if you met him, you will remember Bob Lanier. That's facts. Rest in peace. I'm going to send love to everyone listening to the show. We appreciate you guys rocking with us. Send love to you as well, BJ. Appreciate you joining us every day here, every morning as we break down the biggest and best topics from around the NBA. So make sure you guys are subscribed, following, you know, the usual vibes. We're going to be here again tomorrow, breaking down. Celtics versus Bucks game five and we're going to see if the Warriors can take advantage of their 3-1 lead and finish their business against the Memphis Grizzlies so until next time my people I appreciate you tuning in big love to everyone listening and as always get buckets